Good morning, ladies. Welcome to Wednesday morning skincare Q&A. Lovely to be on with my Facebook ladies. And I might not get the comments here. I've got two ladies with me. I've got Nisha, who's going to read out comments. Come and say hi. There's Nisha, who's some of you know already. Hello. And I've got Maiko. <laughs> and at the last 10 minutes, come on, Maiko, come and say hi. The last 10 minutes of this, what we're going to do <laughs> is, thank you, darling, is we're going to um, go through, I've got my whole wardrobe of skincare there, and we can do a quick fire 10 minutes, so you need to let me know the timing of that. It's gonna be a 40, half an hour post. Um, so when it's 20 minutes time, we'll do that. I'm gonna start off before I start any, good morning ladies, before I start any uh, skincare Q&A with a mask, because my face is a bit tired today. I just did an LED light, and I'm now gonna finish off with a new dry sheet mask, because I've been obsessed with, I love Charlotte Tilbury's, and I love Nanette de Gaspé's, their dry sheet ones. I've never found a third, so let's see if Trish is going to get in the Muji draw. All right, and it's Instant Solutions Dry Sweet Mask, dramatic results in 15 minutes, hydrate, plump, smooth, and lift. What more could you ask for in a mask? So any dry sheet mask like this, you can feel which side is impregnated with the products. So I put that on. It's got the classic little, put it behind the ear and put it um, over the ear like that. So you really feel you just had a sort of, heavy duty surgical facelift. The great thing about a dry sheet mask is, darling, can you get me a roller from there? You know yeah. my plastic rollers. Yeah. Um, is that they allow you to do anything. You can be, you know, hanging out the washing. I've been on planes with these. You can be, you can do anything because there's nothing dripping and there's no, thank you very much. And there's no hindrance. So the other thing that I do when I've got a dry sheet mask um, is to use the Jean Philbert roller. This is a roller I get off Amazon for about 30 pounds. And it's good for many um, situations where you wanna just kind of say hi to your skin. So one of those is wearing a mask like this because I will then do some little bit of rollering and there's no needle on this roller. It's a pure stimulation. Uh, so I want to impregnate the ingredients of the dry sheet mask better they always say when they do these dry sheet masks that the way you activate them is the heat of your hands. So I do start with that, I've just forgotten to do it. And you activate the products inside with that heat. Just, you can just do a little bit. These masks usually also, you can use three times. So you put them back in their sort of sealed packaging. Um, I think there are many masks that do nothing. There are very few masks that do something. So I am really keen to see Will she do that for me? I want Trish to do this for me. Okay, I'll just do a little bit more like that and then we'll go on to the skincare Q&A whilst I wait this for this to work. So, let me just put my glasses on. All right, we can fire away, Nisha, because you've got, in fact, I don't need my glasses. What joy. And let me just, can I just say good morning to everybody who's joined? Linda, good morning. Jill from Durham, good morning. Oh, I can't swing back and forth, that's a pity. But I'm just gonna say, Good morning to everybody who's joined. Yes, okay. So we've got a question here from Rosalita. She says, how to feed the skin during the fall season? Ah, now, I think you're American, fall season, or you're an expat. Um, well, the opposite of an expat, if you're living in England, but American. I think that what happens to our skin in fall is a lot of us might have come back from a holiday in the sun where the air was more humid and there was an opportunity for our skin to actually feel hydrated. It's very rare on holiday for me when I'm in a hotter country that my skin feels dry. Um, that's why I find people who live in humid climates actually have kind of great skin, by the by. So you come back to your normal household and you might find that you're starting to put on the um, heating and your skin is reacclimatizing from being in an environment where there's a lot of hydration and moisture in the air to nothing, to quite a dry air. So that immediately will make your skin feel dry, dull, and that transition requires, for me, an exfoliation, granular and um, liquid, but for you to get off the sort of dead skin cells of your um, summer months where your skin is slightly like the turkey in the oven, slightly toughened, and you wanted to slosh it off. So I love getting a really good exfoliating routine in the autumn and you can do granular exfoliation or you can do liquid. So some liquid ones that I love are like Alpha Liquid Gold, if you have a slightly oily skin, is a nice mid-range one. And my favorite one I use, which is kind of 
you know, upper end of the scale is Biologie Recharge, which is a, amazing. They have five different kinds of exfoliating toners. But it's, it's one layer to introduce in your skincare routine. And then, obviously, you want a nice moisturizer. But what's more important is those steps before you moisturize. To me, a moisturizer should just be something that goes on top and is a feel-good factor. You've got to have done all the hard work before. Yeah, okay. Somebody said, Lisa said, 48-year-old, dry, sensitive skin, best budget skincare routine. Best what? Budget skincare routines. Budget skincare routines. I mean, we're going to go straight into the cupboard, aren't we? I feel it's coming. Yeah. Um, are we just going to... We're going to go there for now. So, so just... Um, we're just going to... Come with me. And um, I'm just going to then... Um, I'm going to show you here. There's a, there's a load of stuff that we can look at. But if I'm looking at a bunch of budget skincare routines, here in my little... Am I filming that right? Can you see that? Um, I've got cleansers. It depends on your skin type. You're 48 years old. I don't know anything about your skin. I don't know if it's oily or dry, but I'm going to just say a few general things I love in budget. So if you want a cleanser, that's a balm cleanser and you can't do Emma Hardy or you can't do Sarah Chapman. Botanics cleansing balm is brilliant. I love it. You don't need to spend that much money on a cleanser. You just need to take your makeup off and slightly hydrate your skin if it's dry. But you know, if you look at that, and you think of the Yves Lom, not a huge difference, really, not a huge difference. Um, so I'd sort of say, spend less money there. Is this filming okay? Yeah. 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 Um, and then when you go down, if you want to consider exfoliation, for example, Garden of Wisdom have done an exfoliating powder. It's a cleansing powder, a pore cleansing powder. It's done maybe for an oily skin, but on that transitional time, sorry, I can't open it and do this, so we need to... Yeah, if you film, yeah, you might have to turn it around. Yes, yeah, sorry, my okay. guess. Um, so just yeah. Oh, which is the button? Just no, it won't turn around. Okay. It, it will turn around actually. Sorry, I'll do that for one second. Hold on, hold on. We're just there. So if I switch around, there we turned around. Okay, brilliant. All right. So Garden Wisdom, I love because um, it's this finely milled powder. It's a bit mucky but you mix it with water and it gives you a really good exfoliation. So I say kind of clean exfoliate, you've spent, I can't remember, Micah, do you remember how much Garden Wisdom on is? It's like about eight, 10 pounds eight or so. Pounds or 10 pounds. Yeah. And I think that the cleanser here is probably seven, Yeah, six ninety nine or something. Something like that, it's a really good price, okay? Now, where should you spend your money when you're that age? I'd spend it in a serum. Mm. I'd really go economy, and I know you said you want the whole range economy, so then I might continue with the sort of garden of wisdom regime and do a vitamin C because at that age, whether your skin's dry or not, vitamin C is going to give you a bit of a glow and it's just gonna make your skin feel fresher. So garden of wisdom has 23% um, L-absorbic acid in it, which is a really good form of vitamin C. And it also has ferulic, which gives a kind of stabilized vitamin C, but it also makes it work better. Um, so I love that. I just realised the sun is coming in and I've just done these drawers and I don't want that vitamin C in the light, so I have to think about this. I have to put a, a case of... Can we admire this first? Sorry, because it took me, like, the last 10 days meticulously working, because Micah's as obsessed as I am, yeah. but meticulously working over it. Then, hyaluronic. Oh, hyaluronic, hyaluronic, you know? Sometimes I love them and sometimes I actually think they make my skin drier. So... I do think you've got to have a certain kind of skin to be a real friend of hyaluronic, and you've got to have a right size molecule. But simple, I'm going to go back to this 47 year old. So yeah. you're doing a balm to take off your makeup, maybe a couple times a week, you're going to do the, the, the exfoliating cleanser. You're going to do a vitamin C, and then you could just do a moisturizer. Um, and one or two moisturizers I love. I love this one so much. Andalou, it's a thousand roses. Um, this is actually the rose water mask, but they have a moisturiser like this. I don't have one with me. But smells nice, organic. Just, you know, let the serum do that work. Put that on. If your skin is in need of a bit more of a sort of retinol routine, then you could consider at night adding into your regime a sort of retinol product. Two or three, I think it's very difficult to find an inexpensive retinol that works because... Retinol, by and large, is quite expensive to produce a good one. But on my little retinol moment here, there's two ways you can do it. You can go to Beauty Pie, and these are actually, um, I do like this retinol. And I think what's good about Beauty Pie is when you kind of buy into their subscription service, 
you get this for a fraction of the price. And I think it does work. It's got vitamin C and retinol. A lot of retinols nowadays are adding vitamin C to that um, recipe. And I think it works. It's not going to be as high as if you do a really active retinol. So if we went sort of more of a mid-moment retinol. This is one that Myco loves, which is from Indeed Labs. And retinol resurface. It's a, it's a less aggressive retinol that you're not going to flake. But it's going to build up slowly a kind of impact on, on fine lines. Um, so, that, okay, I'll stop there because we've got to do more questions, yes. So, okay. health and skin journey says, how can I shrink my huge pores? Shrinking huge pores is probably, again, going to be some kind of exfoliating toner. You need some acids to reduce the pore size. And depending on how old you are and how oily your skin is, probably depends on which acids you should go for. So, um... I need to know how old you are. Okay. Yeah, I need to know how old you are. I need to know if you're young or if you're old. Yeah. Helen Thornton says, what is the one product we should splurge on when we're looking at facial skincare products? What's your go-to? I mean, again, I would say it depends on your age. So if, you're, if you look in the mirror and you think, my skin looks sort of dull and you're not 50 thinking I'm looking really wrinkly, it's more dullness, then I think a really good vitamin C. And if your skin feels, you look in the mirror and you think, I feel wrinkly, then I would do a good retinol. And I think that's the most important places for you to spend your money. So you could just buy the cheapest cleanser, you could buy a really cheap moisturizer and just save everything for the vitamin C and the retinol. And I would say a good SPF for sure. But SPFs now, I was looking recently at um, a review of a very inexpensive broad spectrum SPF 50 from Amazon, and it was something like seven pounds. It was a very good price. I think uh, Caroline Hyron's um, recommended it, and one or two other people. I think I must call that in and see what it's like. I don't know what the texture's like, but I thought brilliant. Yeah. Lenny Petit says thoughts on collagen drink supplements. Oh, I'm in two minds. Let me show you something. I I think that I've got it here actually. So. This is um, the only collagen supplement that I found has worked for me, and I've tried so many. So I tried the um, gold, you know they have something gold, uh, which is in boots, you see it everywhere, those drapes. But I then read how much sugar was in them, and I just thought that's so, such an oxymoron. Why should you be, you know, collagen, building up collagen you know, you've lost collagen for many reasons, but one is because free radicals have come in and fought your skin, and free radicals are derived, or, or, you know, those free radicals come from smoking, they come from sun, they come from sugar. So if you then have a drink for collagen which has sugar in it, that just doesn't seem to, to um, be fit for purpose. So I'm anti-dose, and also my doctor said to me when I was taking collagen supplements, pills, you know, he would say, really, I don't, I don't know, yeah, no, I don't I'll go through it, by the way, if you want to do supplements. Um, it can never get out to the bones, and it can never get out to the skin. So, you know, the most it would do is get to the bones, and, and collagen is really good, actually, for bones, if you work out, so it's good to take collagen supplements. But then, um, Vivian Tausmatt, who um, did my skin for years, and used to do these weird um, machines on my legs to tone them, which I so wish I could do now, but I don't have the time. Um, did this and she was determined to find a collagen powder that delivered it to the skin. And I have found if I use that religiously every day, I see a contributing factor to my skin feeling better. So I think there are one or two good supplements out there. You have to really look, they shouldn't contain sugar. They should have a delivery. So she has tryptophan in hers which helps deliver the collagen to the skin. Okay, next, yes. What are your thoughts on cleansing once a day, only in the evenings? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I get that you might wake up and think, I cleaned my skin last night, I've only been lying in bed, I'm waking up, and I don't need to. But what happens overnight with your skin is, Eve Long used to tell me this, and I loved her description of it, because she used to do my facials for about 10 years when I had very bad skin. She was the most amazing, healing, fantastic woman. And then she sold the company to um, Space NK, and some of the formulas changed, and the range really expanded. She always said to me, you wake up, and what happens is your skin has rejuvenated overnight, and the witch's bruise, what she referred to it, the witch's bruise sits 
on the top of your skin. So imagine a witch's brew full of toxins and shit that's come out of your skin overnight. And you're going to think, oh, don't need to clean my face? Just think of it like that. Think of that thing, that invisible thing sitting on your face of all the gunk that's come out. And you're just going to put makeup on top of it. No. So, you know, just get in a routine. I do it really quickly. You know, I fit a lot in my day, and sometimes I have a sort of Sunday morning facial, and other times I'm doing it, and I'll, I'll be, I mean, I could literally show you a routine now that I put the mask on, where I'll be in and out in a few minutes. So think about doing it. Yeah. HHA Ross says, good affordable serum. I'm currently using Arbonne, great, but a bit pricey. I mean, Arbonne, I have never tried because it is a um, peer-to-peer, um, you know, like Stella and Dot. And so I've never, you know, I don't have a PR company or whatever, and I've never tried the products, and I've always, you know, I'm so obsessed with quite active ingredients, and I think I just wrote them off, and I shouldn't at all. I should try the products. But I just think ages ago, Michael, we might have been certain. We'll have a look. I don't think we were, to be honest. I do think there's certain people I trust to formulate serums well. So I can only go from experience of people I have met where I thought they're really formulating a serum and they're thinking about the level of ingredients. So the first um, company to come out with that was uh, The Ordinary. And The Ordinary, if we look at all these really inexpensive serums, The Ordinary really thought about all these interesting ingredients and, and separated them out. But what happens is, with the ordinary is you really need to understand what they're for. So I don't know if I've got it on these, but I ended up writing it on some of them. Where's my buffet? Um, and so, you know, just to give me some... Okay. All right, I didn't write it on, but this is squalene on. That's fine. That's just something you can put, with, put on your skin. So Garden of Wisdom Neoproline. Hang on. Now, I'm starting with the ordinary. Let me start with the ordinary. This is Reversatol and Ferulic Acid. <sighs> Reversatol is... It's good to use if your skin is not really, really dry or really, really oily. It's a nice serum. I'd say Buffett is better if you have a drier skin. And I think it has... What's it got in it as well? It's got Ferulic Acid in it. I'd say it's a great serum when you're in your sort of 30s and 40s. Um, and make your skin a bit oilier. Um, so ordinary will, you'll pick it up and you'll think, okay, Buffett, what does that mean? Vitamin C is simple, retinol is simple. You need to navigate well when you've got this company giving you all these singular ingredients. And a lot of people will say, you know, here's some reverse toll, and I haven't got another, um, I haven't got another ordinary, but let's say, here's reverse toll, here's something, and here's something else. So those were each only six or nine pounds, but together, they were sort of 27 pounds. And it could be that somebody in this mid-range here is going to give you a serum which has got three of those things in it for the same price. So you might think, oh, that's really inexpensive for those singular ingredients. And you've got to think, what ingredients do I want for my skin? And if you feel, my God, this is a minefield, really complicated, then I would go to somebody who's made a recipe for a specific type of skin and buy that. Um, but if you really understand and you love to layer ingredients, the ordinary is brilliant. I think there's other ones that have come out since then, like Timeless, and I did try, I don't have it here yet, I had it, no, we've got to get some more, but I have their mm. vitamin C, and it was the first vitamin C, Timeless is an Australian brand, it's the first vitamin C that I tried that was really similar to SkinCeuticals, which is a £130 vitamin C, which I've also run out of. Um, and this is something like 16 pounds, like it, do you think? Even cheaper, Even more cheaper. like under 10 pounds. And I was pounds. staggered by it. So mm. they've also done a co, co, co Q enzyme, a coenzyme Q10, like it? Mm, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do you think that's good for? That's, I, I, my understanding is it's very hydrated. I'm also trying another range now, I'm just gonna show you, which has done something different, and I'm still, the jury's out. But it's an interesting concept, which is from Ireland here. So these are all the kind of ranges that I'm trying, and some of them I've tried, and they're my favorite friends, and some of them I'm in the process of. So this is my sort of active one that I try right now, and I will not be able to tell the benefits, but I'm trying it first of all for the textures, 
And I think what's interesting here is, is she's tried to simplify things. It's not the cheapest range. It's kind of it's mid 40 slash euros. Yeah, 40 to 60 euros each. And it's an Irish um, uh, skincare specialist, Jennifer. Um, Rock, I think it yeah, is. Yeah, it might be. From the so Skin Nerd. I didn't get, she sent me these products, by the way. Um, so there's a prebiotic cleanser. And then there's a uh, the Sally cleanse, which is the salicylic acid. I wish she'd sent me the one in between, which is the AHA, because I felt salicylic acid is way too um, much for an oily skin. Uh, the prebiotic is nice, but it's nice. Um, this is a really interesting product, which is a skin vegetable. So she's just gone a different route. You know, every skincare specialist is going to think, you know, her whole philosophy too, which I like, was how can I simplify things? So I do like the fact she's numbered it. You know, when I look at my skincare range, it was something I was thinking about too. Um, but we'll get there later. Um, but she's called the Skin Vegetables Pre Serum and Penetrate Enhancer. I mean, this is where I have trouble with stuff. I'm thinking really simple, but then Pre Serum and Penetrate Enhancer, your skin's 10 plus a day, a hero. So we talk about fruit and veg, don't we? Mm -hmm. So I presume there's sort of a fruit and veg ingredient in this. But she's saying this will activate this. So you never knew that you needed a pre-serum serum until she introduced number two. Um, and then you have a skin protein, vitamin A and C. Now, to put vitamin A and C together, a vitamin A retinol derivative. Um, so she's done similarly to Beauty Pie in that recipe. And she says, rebounds, revitalized, restores, giving you smoother, tighter, brighter skin. So that's your kind of, you can use a retinol in the day, which is unusual. And then she's got ceramide, and I've got a number on it because not everyone wants it. So I think sometimes people are trying to make things simpler, but they are introducing extra bits. And then there's a sunscreen, yeah, which I tried. It's got this kind of tint to it, not a tint, but it's a mineral. The difference between chemical and mineral. So that's minerals. It looks like a calamine lotion, and then you rub it in. So it's gonna give you that sort of actual physical protection um, of a physical barrier, whereas a chemical sunscreen will penetrate in. That's the main difference. It's fine. I mean, I think it's a very, very good sunscreen, by the way, and I think for all skin types, because it is, even though it looks like it's a sort of skin tone, it actually is kind of invisible. Interesting range. Sorry, I'm just doing a range review in between. Um, so, I'm just going to take this off. Should we just see how this has been? Yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> That's like... Okay, now when I feel it, if I take off the Tilbury on Annette de Gaspé, and that's literally the only others I'm, I'm going to compare it to, my skin might feel more hydrated. But this is hydrated. Does it feel like a lot of residue? No, it doesn't actually. I mean, it looks like a lot of residue, doesn't it? Yeah, but I want to know if it's actually residue or if it's actually yeah. giving you a glow. I think it's penetrated. I feel it's penetrated. Um, I'm just wanting to, my skin is very puffy. I had my ears blown out yesterday. Have you ever, I mean, I'm really sorry if you follow me on Instagram and saw the wax that came out my ear. There is a few people asking what that was. Yeah, it wasn't an animal. It was 30 years of wax. Um, anyway, I have to say, I think it's a good mask. I think my skin looks nice. You know, what I was going to say is I'm a bit puffy because I'm so congested. I mean, there's just a new camera, so it's very yeah. close, and I get a bit nervous. <laughs> it's not bad, huh? Mm. Yeah? Good. All right, more questions. As I put on, I'm just going to show you my regime I'm doing at the moment. So um, I'm going to put that back. So with this, because I've done this, I'm not going to go to um, the, that one because there's a different level of ingredients. I'm going to go to my um, vitamin C routine. So this is my routine, C ferulic. This is my everyday routine because I've built up over the years and I've tested out. So I do like the C for Ulla. I'm going to put that on top um, like that. I don't put it near the eyes, funny enough. I put it where I just want to continue that glow like that. And then I put on, this is like, this is the worst. I'm going to do a routine next week, all right, that's a less expensive routine, but because I put the mask on, I feel the, the, this is the most foul smelling product you will ever purchase. Colostum, not for vegetarians, from Biologic Recherche. But this, to me, is the most disgusting yet profound serum I've ever tried. So it just has 
Oh, you have to hold your nose, literally. You have to hold your nose. <laughs> this is my dedication to skincare. Ah. It's kind of incredible because it's the penetration is tremendous. The molecule side is tiny. And it's just plumping and doing tons of stuff to your skin. Do you feel it does more? because it smells so bad. Well, there They're is that. <laughs> my kid, it's a very good point, there is that. I feel I should put the rest on my hands before I wash my hands, because it's a bit sticky. Um, and then after that, you see, as I've done that, um, I probably from there go straight to a BFF, because a lot of you ask, you know, when do you use BFF in the regime? And I would use it, oh great, run out of my color. Yeah, I've run out of my colour, so so typical. I'm always the one, last one to have the right product. It's a little bit sunny today, and I've been doing quite a lot of retinol. So I'm actually going to do quite a lot of um, yeah, that. Just putting it in like that. I always start when I do it where I have the most propensity to have pigmentation, and so I don't get too much in my nose and everywhere. So I start where I feel I want to continue the glow and have the protection. I do under here. And then on the forehead. Rubbed in. Mm -hmm. So I didn't need a moisturizer for that because if you have an amazing serum, you don't really need moisturizer. And sometimes moisturizer cheats your skin into thinking it's hydrated when it's not, and then you don't really think, actually, I'm dehydrated or I, I, I've got dry skin. So I just, that's my thought behind it. This is a, whilst you're here, a new product coming out in, a new product coming out in November. Because you're here. And then we'll get back to there. And I go put my shirt on, because I can't get really cold. I want to do a lesson, by the way, for all of you. See your makeup without a mirror. I think you'll find it interesting. Yeah. That's kind of how I keep my stash. You see how I keep my stash. <laughs> Destroy her. Because Michael and I go through endless permutations how to do it. But this is my latest. These little singular. I mean, how good is that? It's just, I mean, that is like. Okay, I'm going to put my shirt on, and then we're going to go back there. Maiko, take a question. Go on, take a question, Maiko, because she is like skin. <laughs> Anyone have oily skin? Maiko's your woman. Spot, Maiko's your woman. Go on in there, darling. Hi, Maiko. <laughs> okay, I'll film, I'll film the wall. Somebody asked about um, crepey neck and something you could use on your neck and maybe to plump the skin around the eyes as well. I mean, like, I... I don't use neck creams. Yeah. Um, but I think Trini doesn't really believe in neck creams either. Neck creams. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you believe in neck creams. I mean, I don't believe as much. I've got, can I go up and send some? Let me show you. Oh, so, you know, I just put my shirt on. And I don't take it. <laughs> this is the only thing that I've been interested in ever that I've been sent as a neck concept. But for me, the best thing that you can do for your neck, ladies, is this get a micro needle. Micro needle your neck very gently when you do your neck, by the way, because you can get red marks. Like that. You can get lots of different micro needles. We've done Secret Seven micro needles on Trini London um, under skincare, under the Secret Sevens. So you can see all my favourites, all different prices. So do your neck like that, and then put on a retinol. That is what you should do for your neck. Um, and what will happen is the micro needling will make that retinol penetrate much greater. This is an alternative. Now, I don't know yet, because we haven't looked yet, because what we do is I try things for a few days and then Michael and I check the ingredients and then we tell you more about it. So I'm only at the stage of trying it. It's basically, it's Emma Hardy, Lift and Scalp Firming Neck Treatment. Rich hydrating, so it's basically collagen. There's no, they've said they've got Lifto, Liftonics with a registered trademark. It makes it sound really exciting. Expert that helps to boost collagen and neodermal, needle-free collagen elastin filler. I mean, it makes you think, I want it now. So it's got a little thing there. And then this goes here. So I, being me, I being me, pressed it really hard. <laughs> but what it does is it's, we need to 
we do need to move our neck. We do need to, you know, it stays quite passive there. When you're moving your facial muscles, A-E-I-O-U, you're keeping your face lifted and we don't do that enough with our neck. So I have done this before, but A, A, E, E, I, I, U, 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 U. You want to keep that jawline tight. You want to keep your neck without becoming froggy. A, E, I, O, U, 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 and just feel that. I mean, it, when you do that, your jawline, all right, really feels like, I mean, I've just worked out downstairs doing a bit of gym, but the jawline, like, just look at what's happening to my jaw and the muscles around when I do this. So A is here. This one holds up your whole face, by the way. E, E is inside there. It's like when you're doing a lower ab. It's right in there, but that's going to keep that neck tight. E, 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 E. As I'm doing the E, I'm feeling my tummy too. E, E. And then I is then going right in and down to that lower muscle. I. And then O, O is these muscles here. O. You're not going to get a weightlifter's neck. You're going to get a more agile toned neck. O. Oh, and I quite like doing this like repetition of each letter five times instead of A-E-I-O-U, A-E-I-O-U, because I think then you're, it's like doing reps. Oh, 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 and then you, right in there. You know how we want to kind of get the liposuction in or tighten it up. Some people are built with a uh, jawline that does get extra fat here, and some people are built with, um, you know, jaws that will go saggy here. So this is you. Ew, ew. Those are important. I'm now feeling like, I mean, if you girls have gone with me, you'll be like, oh, God, can you hit me in the jaw? Is that good? <laughs> then this, well, so what I like about this is the mechanism by which I am massaging my neck as much as the product going in. You know, just giving stimulation, and it might go a little red, but it just means the collagen is coming out and, and saying hi and having a little fight with the surface of your skin. And that's good. To me, that's good. I'm not that press gently, hardly touch. <laughs> I'm not that woman. Okay, next question. Um, usability gal says best thing to clear up the redness of a recent but now gone bad blemish. A recent but now gone bad blemish. You want to tone down redness. Mm. Well, there's things I can show you that are for women with rosacea, and that will actually. And then there's products I can show you that actually take away redness. So, I mean, the thing is, if your spot's now gone, and you literally want, I'm just going to talk about the mirrors. Because I'm very sorry, I have to do a bit of, by the way, Miracle Blur is coming back in stock. Again, let me just do this. So I just want to, so evening, if you've got um, a spot and you want to even, even out, that's kind of important. That's what Miracle Blur would do, even out. There. And if you want to cover redness, like just actually cover the redness, I'd probably do Trintron, which I do at the moment as well. Just here. No, I haven't got it. I ain't got it, white ink, I got it, white ink, I got it, I ain't got it, I ain't got it. Come on. I've got Yas, I've got Sandy, I've got Amelia. Yes, it's very good if you're red skin tip, by the way. Let's see here. There. Takes away redness. It's the wrong colour for me because I haven't got to control. So just a touch is very good at just taking rid of getting rid of it. But then if you want to do an actual treatment, there's a couple, oh my god, I've got to get. No, they're not hot yet. I just don't want these in the sun, my kids have got to yeah. think about that. Um, down, so I have something here for redness. Yeah. Oh, rescue and emergency calming. Let me introduce you to that drawer. So there's a few things here. Um, oh, that's quite sweet, that one. It's not right. Um, da, 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 da. Where's our little rosacea thing? Where's our little magic queen? Is that bit down the bottom there? Sensitive skin. There it is, thank you. Okay. So. If your skin is really um, red and inflamed, but there's no spots left, colloidal silver is brilliant for reducing inflammation, and silver serum has colloidal silver in it. It's an anti-microbacterial, so I love that as a product. Um, is clinical the 
Recovery Shield Balm is an amazing product for just recovering your skin. This is um, it's clinical, it, I get from Victoria Health, and it has been developed by five dermatologists who work a lot in surgery, and they want to do sort of post-surgery and, and things that really properly help your skin. And it is, it is a, a, a really professional dermatologist range as opposed to a token gesture dermatologist range. Um, so this is a very good product to put on. I was going to recommend this, which is any of you also who have rosacea. Uh, Maiko and I found this through a lady who works as a makeup artist for us, Katie. Yeah, Katie. And she thought it was fantastic. It's called Rosalique. It's a three-in-one anti-red, this miracle formula. It's green. It's not dissimilar to Avene's green cream, which you can get in boots, but it's greener. And it just does take away, you know, green takes away redness. But this also has a tiny bit of colour in it. It's sort of actually a skin tint for me, but I think you'd have to be aware of your skin tone. Um, and it just, you know, you re throughout the day. It instantly conceals, so it has got concealer, but it also protects and it treats the redness. So those are redness moments. Yeah. Katie says it really um, works well layered underneath BFF. That's how she uses okay. it. Okay, she says great. it's really, it layers really well. Fantastic. Oh, all right. Next question, ladies. Kiki Creek says, do you believe in dermaplaning? Um, I think dermaplaning is what, what people call a derma pen. Yeah? So I, if, you, if, you, if it is what I think you think it is, which is a derma pen, my hesitation with that is I have quite a lot of hair on my face. And if I do threading, it will pull it out at the base. And the idea of dermaplaning is they're sort of scraping your skin with a um, blade uh, in the form of a small pen and it kind of gets the real dirt out. So I love the idea, but it does also, in a way, shave you. So I think if you look at men's beards, when you're shaving a man's beard, you're just cutting the hair, you're not pulling it out of the roots so it doesn't get weaker. So I don't think it's gonna grow back quicker. That's always been my biggest fear of Dermaplaning, dermapen. But some people love it because they, and also I religiously exfoliate my skin with both granular exfoliation and, um, and uh, liquid. So I think people who love dermaplaning are people who maybe haven't had a religious exfoliating routine and they do that and they feel, oh, my skin feels so clean. Yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Rory says, what's the best hormonal spot treatment for a 50 year old? Oh, tricky. Um, I think, I don't know if you're on any kind of biodynamic hormones, I feel a lot of women suddenly get spots in when they are on a menopausal treatment and maybe there's too much testosterone in their, in their HRT or in their um, biodynamic hormone. That's what happened to me and that's why I got, um, I got bad uh, spots. So once they're there, they're not the kind of spots that I used to get in my 20s and 30s, which would end in a pussy spot. They're a more, you know, they're just a bit, they never get anywhere. They're just red and throbby. So I think how you need to deal with them is, there's a very good product I love from um, a Victoria Health called Clear Skin, and it has zinc in it and burdock root. And zinc will reduce inflammation, and burdock root is very good at reducing bacterial infection. And I love that combination. And I think that it's something you have to deal with internally when it's menopausal spot more than surface and just cover it up or just don't put too much um, salicylic acid on it. There's a lot of these little spot treatments that younger, you know, they're, it, they're targeted more at people with kind of, you know, you know, young person acne, like Maribadescu's spot treatment, and they have a lot of silicone acid in them, some of them are pink, and you shouldn't shake them, and you put them on your skin. And I think the problem when people apply those products is they put them, they so want the spot to go, they put them everywhere. And so where it's not infected, it would dry that skin up too, and then the contrast in that, that skin that's being treated and your normal skin that's being treated, which doesn't need to be, and, and your normal skin, can be a way to create scarring. So I think you've got to be very, very careful. That's my thoughts on it, yeah. Emma V. Collins says, very thin skin, lined under eye. What can you do to repair and build back elasticity late 30s? <coughs> Bless, you. Bless you. When your skin is very, very thin, you have to be careful what retinol you use. 
Um, and I think there are retinols that can slightly thin the skin, and there's retinols that don't thin the skin so much. So using the right retinol product is important. For those fine lines under the eyes, retinol is good. Um, there are other treatments that some people love, and I don't know yet what I think of, but a couple of people swear by these. I've got eye stuff here, and you I don't know if you know me well, you know I don't really talk about eye very much. You know, I don't say I love an eye cream, I always say use your serum. But there's a few people I respect and admire who swear by certain things. One of Alice Hart Davis, who I love, she does the treatments guide. If you're thinking of having more stuff done to your skin than just a product, consider um, looking at her book, Treatments Guide, because it's, it's really good. So she loves and swears by the Votary eye oil, which has a little bit of retinol in it, doesn't it, Michael? Yeah. And so this is a really, it's got tuberose and retinoid, so the retinoid is the one that's not gonna thin your skin. So that she loves. Also, if you've got, this is more, not for thin skin actually, so I won't say it, it's the um, DCL, which I love their vitamin C overnight treatment, but they do, I'd say that's more for darkness, dark circles. Um, and the mid, I mean, I'm just seeing what I've got in here. You see, I don't really, I mean, this one actually probably has a good reading, which is, which is Dr. Seabag's, the firming eye cream, but it's more of a firming cream. I would say the only other one I'd really suggest for you is by Cosmetics, and it's called Opti Eye Crystal, and it's a little green one. There's a little greeny one, but I think this one is a bluey one. It has a tiny bit of retinoid in as well. I think it's actually a fantastic under eye treatment when you have exactly what you have. It's very expensive, but what I'd suggest is maybe just try it um, and make all the rest of your skincare very inexpensive and just put that one focus on the area and see if there's improvement. But there are good clinical trials on it too, so I do rate it. Cosmetics, C-O-S-M-E-D-I-X, Opti Eye Crystal, yeah. Probably Beyonce says, I'm getting married in May. My skin is pretty nice, but I want it to glow. Any treatment you recommend? Probably Beyonce, I mean fantastic. <laughs> so you want your skin to glow and you're getting married. Um, I don't know what your skin is like. Um, I don't know if you're saying probably Beyonce because you've got a browner skin. Well, no, you're not. Just, just like the dance Beyonce. moves. Mm. The dance moves, okay. <laughs> so um, how old are you? Um, you can see a photo oh, here. Oh my, oh my gosh, A tiny, tiny photo. But... A tiny photo here, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Probably Beyonce, there she is. I can't for the life of me see, but it looks like you've got dark hair and mm. sort of olive skin. Um, okay, I'd say, and I don't know your age or anything, mm. but when you're, um, there's certain treatments I think are really good, which just, you can have two or three of them. So um, I'm trying, by the way, the um, Profilo next uh, this week, I think, and I thought, Michael, I need you to film it, because I want to see what it's like. I might try it on okay. the hands and the neck, um, which is those tiny bits of hyaluronic um, injected into your skin. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and I just, so many people have asked me about it, I thought, I'm gonna try it with somebody. So I found somebody who's very good, and I'm gonna try it. I don't know if I want to do it on my face yet, but we'll see. Um, but I think there's certain treatments that can um, give your skin a glow, which would be radio frequency. Uh, and I think those treatments work really well. Face Gym do some very good um, facials which really boost your skin with a few machines and not just a product. So it's like you might say once a month you're going to do that. LED light therapy I really recommend and that will give your skin a glow. So I know there's one in Harvey Nichols, a Dermalux subsidiary and there's some dotted around the country. But I believe in that kind of product and a very good vitamin C. Those, that combination will give your skin a glow. Yeah. Should vitamin C be used in the morning or evening? Um, I use it in the morning. There is no written rule. There's a lot of old wives' tales. You can use it morning or night. Uh, if I come back from the summer and I have extra pigmentation, I use a very strong one at night, which is this. It's the only one that I've found can really reduce pigmentation as a vitamin C, which is the DCR vitamin C night booster. If I'm using that one, because that one is um, an expensive one, in the daytime, then I will use the Garden Wisdom, which um, has 23 or 25% vitamin C. Um, and so 
if I'm on holiday, just to show you what I do, I put that one on in the morning and I mix in Dr. Seabag's powder because I think underneath my SPF, I want extra vitamin C because it will protect against pigmentation. I believe that for a long time. I had incredibly bad melasma and I got into a regime that whenever I was in the sun, I would put literally mix this like a paste nearly with my SPF and just have that there and I felt um, it was good. So when people say you shouldn't use it during the day, I just believe that's absolute crap because I've used it and it's actually really helped to prevent further damage. Uh, it just depends if you have a retinol. The one thing I'd say is I don't do a retinol and a vitamin C at night. And even though I showed you two products which were like the Beauty Pie and the new lovely lady um, of the Skin Vegetable Lady, mm -hmm. Um, they're using much lower dosages, and I use quite high dosages of each, so I wouldn't combine them at night. Yeah. Veronica says, how often would you recommend seeing a facialist? Are we looking at questions also from Facebook? Yes, we can we do. Are. Yeah. No, yeah. No, just, I think yeah, that, yeah. Uh, I feel if we look at all the questions from there and we don't take any questions from the floor, it's a bit mean. Okay. Yeah. Um, Let's see if I can scroll. Oh. Can you scroll or not? Um, someone says, love a bhaji um, made their skin glow. What are your, what are your thoughts I on a bhaji? I just think you said Let's go and look at it. Because I'm just about to start trying it next week. A bhaji um, I used about 10 years ago or longer when I, no, I used when I really at the very beginning of getting rid of my um, melasma, when I had Lila, and I did their one month program, renewal program, which had a very strong vitamin C in it, like a tw to me 20%, which is strong that time and it had a hydroquinine, which is quite a controversial ingredient, but it had a tube of hydroquinine, which is that sort of thing that makes your skin, you know, pink. But um, some people are allergic to it. So they then sent me, because then Dr. Obaji left Dr. Obaji, and he started, what's it called? O, O Skincare with the blue, that's him. I don't know, yeah, I've not actually him, heard. That's him, the O. Okay. You know, the O, the blue one with O. You'll have to that's show him. me. So then it's now somebody else, it's a company. But he's sent me these two products, I'm gonna try them. Uh, one is sunscreen, which I imagine they would do well. SPF 30 though. And I'm slightly surprised that something like a Baji would do a 30 and not a 50 mm. in, a, in a proper thing like that. Because if you were in skin cuticles, that would be a 50. So yeah. I find that interesting. But it's got very, I mean, I think what's, what they're doing here is they're saying a 10% absorbic acid which is quite high in a sunscreen. So when I talked actually about that concept, what I did with Dr. Seabag and my sunscreen, that's sort of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So that is interesting. I might take that with me actually to Sydney and try it when I'm there. I'll tell you what I like. And then they have here a professional C. It's a peptide serum, but within with vitamin C as well. So this is peptides with a bit of vitamin C. So it's diluted the amount of vitamin C. And they have also three different vitamin C. So I think they're interesting. They've gone into new hands. Um, the old Dr. Avaji isn't there, so um, I don't know yet. Okay. Um, can you remind people what the mask was that you had on at the beginning? Yes, the mask I had on at the beginning is, let's go here, it's, it's um, the Trish mask. Really good, I don't know how much it is, because I bought it in Harvey Nichols last week, and I find a lot of different things. Um, so I don't know how much it is, and I presume you can use it three times, let me just see. Um, a master routine three times a week, yes, that's fine, but we don't know if we can use it three times. It's so weird, it doesn't tell you. Uh, refold and reseal the mask. Wear for 15 minutes, remove, refold and reseal the mask. Okay. That's really weird. Nowhere on the packaging does it say how many times you can use it, which I think is a bit weird. I love the fact they have the expiration date. 2020, I think that's a really good thing. There's so many times I look at these products and I think, oh, how long do I have them? And it's something you all need to do. Like, these really shouldn't be in the sun and I need to get something to shade them, especially the vitamin Cs. But I would say this mask is gonna be less than my Nanette. And I love the ingredients. And her husband is a plastic surgeon. Mm -hmm. And I think she has a good access to interesting things that do stuff your skin. Yes, okay, last two questions. Um, so again, what SPF do you use? I use every day BFF Trini London SPF 30. And if I'm going in the sun, I use, um, I either use Julia Hunter. This is a really intense hydrator SPF 30, but it's, um, 
it calms and repairs my skin. So if I'm doing retinol, I, I use that sometimes. And then I use the 50, um, the air gel from Heliocare. And I love this, Micah uses this too. Mm -hmm. And I think what's very good is whether you have a oily skin or a dry skin, it doesn't really give you spots. No. Do you find that? Yeah, yeah that's why I use um, it. Yeah, and it's really, really great. Love it, and it's a kind of foam, and it just, if you're going on a winter sun holiday, it comes like that, and you rub it in. And it just leaves a nice sort of film on the face, not horrible, not sticky, just makes the skin fresh. So one of my favorites. Um, yeah, that's it. I think we're done. We've been doing it a while, haven't we? Yes. We have. All right. <laughs> so ladies, I just want to say thank you for watching, and I hope we answered a few questions. And I realised, do we just do all the ones from Instagram? We were mixing them. We were mixing them yeah. too. So we, we will ask you next week, I'll probably do on Instagram. But if you want to leave a question, you can, um, you can leave it. And we will probably, we won't put this on YouTube, but we will put this on the blog. So if you have friends who only have Instagram, not Facebook, let them know. But we'll put a note up. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Nisha. Bye.